Castle de la is in a way a uh, home because I see myself as a product of Castle de la. I, it got me to the point where I had enough grounding in history to be able to go and do a PhD in history at UCLA. And it was in a, in a way home because when I left Iran, I came to Los Angeles directly and then came to Castel de la. Growing up in Iran, I would go to American stores and buy American comics. And that's how I learned English. Like many other Iranians of my age, I always wanted to go and see the outside world. And that's what I did. I was part of the student opposition to the Shah. This was a movement of students abroad. I left to go to Iran to participate in the Iranian Revolution in 1979 because I was so interested in revolution and change and all of a sudden it was happening. So I just left all of that and went back to Iran and I was there the last month of the Shah's rule of monarchy and the first six or seven months of the new regime that was not yet formed. It was very intense, very traumatic and I was in a very difficult situation because I was one of the few uh, minority that was opposed to both regimes, both to the one that was falling and to the one that was coming in. The kind of ideas I sympathized with had already lost in Iran. I could not continue my education in Iran. Every, universities were shut down, the country was in chaos. I'm fortunate in that what I study and what I teach and what I write about is in some ways directly related to my own life. My first book was basically a history of the Iranian student opposition to the Iranian government outside of Iran, in Europe and in the U.S. At a conference in Victoria, Canada was when I encountered a young student activist who had been in prison in Iran and he was giving a paper describing his experience. And afterwards he told me, I read your book on Iran's student movement in before the revolution in my prison cell. And this literally brought tears to my eyes because I never thought my scholarship would go that far. My research in Iran is moving more and more towards understanding Iran in a global context. And what I teach is not ancient or medieval history, it's very recent history. It's mostly 20th century, which is already history, but somehow we don't have enough distance from it. Every time I talk about my own life or my own experiences in my classes, it inspires a student interest. If I tell them about my, you know, growing up in Iran or my experiences as a young man taking part in politics, I, I can see that uh, students are very interested in that.